It is time to break into this PT-17 from Dynam. At just over 200 bucks for the plug and play version, I can't wait to see what's in this box. Welcome everybody back to the channel here at Just Playing Crazy. I'm Brendan, we're down in the lair. We are going to dig into my first Dynam product ever. This is the Dynam PT-17 World War II trainer right from BitGo Hobbies. At just over 200 bucks, guys, I don't know how we go wrong here with a 51 inch wingspan plane running a 650 kV motor on a 4S battery pack, recommended 2600. I got a couple variations, we'll see how that goes. But at just over a little over 200 bucks for this uh, plug and play version, I don't, I don't know how we can beat this. As my first Dynam, I'm excited to dig into this box and see what we're really getting as far as uh, quality for the money. This plane comes in two different color versions, a solid yellow and a blue with a yellow wing. I have the top of the box off here sitting and ready to go. I have not touched anything underneath yet. Sporting in three different styles, a plug and play version, like I said, just a little over 200 bucks right now on the BitGo Hobby website. Uh, they have a buy and bind and play version and uh, the smart ready to fly version as well which includes the transmitter and receiver for this plane so you're up in the air a little bit quicker if you're just getting started let's dig into this box and see what we got here we go everybody so let's get rid of the top of the box here and let's start digging in I know some people like unboxing, some people don't like unboxing videos. I like unboxing videos because uh, it gives you an idea what you're what you're in for quality wise, if you will. What comes in, uh, what comes in the box? What is it set up like? What does it look like, etc. So uh, packing is a big part of it. I've seen a lot of planes that just have junk thrown in there. They put some plastic over it and call it a day, and you wind up with punctures and breaks and everything else. So. Um, no damage to the box. This was in another cardboard box that my wife was nice enough to take out of the box for me and actually put here on the table, which I appreciate her efforts. But um, let's get into this. So rip this apart. I'm going to get to the fuselage and we'll take this thing out. I like to take things out of the plastic here and the pieces that they come in and really kind of break them down. Now, as I've said before, this is my first Dynam plane. I've never had a Dynam product before. This is my first one, so I'm kind of excited. Um, but I can't compare this to another Dynam product, but what I can compare it to is a lot of either Motion RC products or Horizon E-Flight products or whatever. Um, so I do like that the, the paint job is kind of protected here with some plastic. Uh, initial thoughts, if you guys can see, it looks like my canopies have either fallen off or come unglued. So um, to me, that's not a, a huge deal breaker there because that would be just a simple tack those things back on so it looks like they were glued on one time and maybe popped off in transit maybe got knocked off there we could see that so that's not the end of the world small dirt maybe a little smudge mark right there looking at this um, mock radial engine on this thing pretty neat Got a couple pieces of maybe little plastic flash or something on there. Or maybe that they're they're meant to be there. Uh, as far as some, some scale details maybe that go around this thing. But the radial engine is pretty neat looking. Motor and stuff is already installed. The finish on the foam models from every manufacturer's point of view is really um, pretty fantastic anymore. You really can't even see that the stuff is foam under underneath so just looking this thing over to see what we're dealing with i mean the clevises on the end of these um thinner control rods are are the typical um what i would see on many different versions or models of different foam electric planes one of the things we'll see if there's in the kit is if they use the little pieces of uh 
plastic or fuel tubing or whatever in there to put over the edge of the clevis. Let's pop this thing off and take a look in the inside. Got a nice, looks like a metal latch there for this thing. I do like the nice positive um, locks going in and it's going into a piece of plastic here, not foam. So that's kind of nice. On the inside, it looks like we have some uh, wood formers to support the servos and uh, Velcro sporting the XT60 connector on the inside with the 50 amp ESC. Doesn't look like a whole lot of wiring on the inside. Yeah, not a not a bad looking not a bad looking fuse. See a little bit of wiggle here in the nose, so I'll be curious to check that out and see if that's a fasten kind of thing or see what happens in the build of this thing. So we'll set that down there. See what we got in this box. So in here, it looks like we have a set of wing panels. Another foam strip. And since those don't have uh, ailerons, we're gonna assume those are the top wings. Again, we'll slice those open and see what that looks like. Pretty lightweight, nice finish. Got some lights out here at the end. I like lights and models. I think they're a nice touch. Um, some models are better than others at dusk flying because the lights really help them to stand out. Um, I noticed the finish looks pretty good on this thing. It looks like you got some plastic tidbits in there that are uh, put in pretty nice. The paint is nice. There's no bleeding of the trim. So I think somebody did a good job painting there. Again, not sure what this is for, but we'll figure that out down the road. And we'll keep this one in there. I mean, this one's the same as the other side, but same impression, like the lights. Pretty cool feature. I like the fact that they're bagged individually in there to keep them from rubbing together and actually damaging things, like um, rubbing the paint off. Here's a foam block. Save these. They're good to rest models on for painting or for working on, things like that. Don't throw that stuff out. Looks like we have ourselves a another set of wing panels. I'm gonna assume that these are going to be our bottom wings. What else we got in here? Piece of cardboard, just junk. Let's cut this bad boy open. So your servos are the typical glued-in servos. Um, I do see your typical kind of plastic standard clevis there. All the panels are very lightweight, so I don't feel like an abundance of weight here like we're going to have any structure issues. Um, when we look at the hinges here, they are foam-type hinges, which are fine. They work well, but we all know what happens to those over time that they do start to crack and break. Simple fix before you ever fly this plane is to put in Blendederm tape, which you can buy half-inch Blendederm tape at next to nothing. And if you apply that in those creases, those things will never break on you ever. So to me, any model I upgrade to suit my liking, but I honestly, I like the finish. I like the, the cleanness on the lines. Looks like they got a carbon rod in there for some aileron support. Um, sometimes in wing panels, you'll see them come warped. And as you can see right down the center line of that, that's, that's pretty straight. Um, and that's the nice part about having smaller wing sections is they're less likely to, to be warped like that. But um, that's, a, that's a pretty clean wing set right there. So kind of impressed. I can already tell you we'll do some clevis... Uh, O-rings on there if they're not included in the kit and we'll also do blended derm tape, but 
that's that's one of my upgrades that I like to do right out of the gate on any model not just these so let's see what else we got in the box lots of boxes it's almost like Christmas so I got to tell you a story my wife carries this plane down she was nice enough to carry it down in the basement for me and put it up here on the bench because I can at the moment um, as she's down here she's looking around and she's like I don't remember seeing that plane before I don't remember seeing that plane before so I know everybody dreads when the wife walks into our hobby room and uh, needless to say I think I changed the locks on the door right after she left so we got to keep her out of here so if you guys promise not to stitch on me that we're adding more planes constantly, I won't, I won't uh, be upset. So uh, pretty neat little rudder assembly. Looks like we're going to have to put the control, ho uh, control horns in there. But uh, again, nice paint and finish on here. Pretty simple. I guess it's what I expect. Again, foam hinges. So what are we going to do? Blend a derm tape. Nice tail, bro. What do we got here? So here we got our horizontal stabilizer. As we pull this thing open. Throw our plastic off to the side. Again, no horns, that's fine. They're in the kit. I guess we have to put those in. Um, foam hinges, they are a little stiff, so we work those, right? And then uh, what we'll do is we make sure that we blend a derm tape everything. I don't mind foam hinges on, on something like this. You know, yes, plastic hinges are an upgrade, but not necessary. There's a lot of planes that I fly EDFs and stuff, um, work the hinges over, put the Blendederm tape in there, and then we we also polycrylic from Minwax. And this is, a, uh, this is one of them shiny planes. So we're gonna use probably a gloss on this one, and we're really gonna dazzle this foam up. But again, my touches, my touches. So that's that's pretty neat. Got some carbon tubes in here. Yep, control horns or bits, right? They call them bits. Got some nice carbon rods. Looks like we have one more box of goodies. Let's see what's inside. Got a big propeller. What is this? This is a 13.6 electric prop. I'll be curious to see how balanced that is right out of the gate. Oh, look at this. Cab uh, cabane struts, I guess is the right way to say that. They're uh, made out of an aluminum. Nice. I'd expected those to be plastic, but that's kind of cool. Um, definitely beef up the wings. Pre-made flying wires. That's sweet. I don't have to make my own flying wires for this. That's nice. That's a nice touch. I like that. What else we got? Strut, strut legs, strut covers, gear, gear legs. Guess that's our landing gear. The guys, that's that stuff's beefy. Like for a uh, foam model, I wonder how this is going to mount in the plane because this stuff is that's strong. That's pretty stout. You bend this, you're going to wad that plane up first. I guarantee it. Nice, got some nice foam round tires. Those look to be, I don't know, maybe three inch. Let me measure one. Yep, three inches. Three inch foamy tires. Nice touch. Sorry about the wiggle and I bumped the camera. Got some American flags. Got some wires. Instrument panel stickers. Comes with a little screwdriver in there. Bunch of glue. I guess we're going to have to do some gluing. Got a uh, nice little tail wheel there springy tail wheel some more screws and horns all right set that stuff off to the side what else we got in the box nothing more in the box and what do we got down in here let's check this out so we got a good decal sheet you know whatever you guys do make sure you put the stickers on the right way always look for the flat line on the stars and you know that goes that goes up see a lot of people with those stickers they put them on incorrectly and they wind up being just off angled and stuff so and we got our instruction book so a lot of the instruction manuals leave a lot to be desired um I'm curious to see how this one fares out. This is color. This is nice. 
give you a nice parts breakdown, nice color diagram on how to put things together. So one of the things that I notice about this one, let me get you off the table and quit shaking you, because that's kind of the unboxing you can see there. Here's my initial thought on this. My initial thought is for the price point on this thing, you're already not going to go wrong because I've spent a lot more on models and had to do more work to them to get them in the air. Um, for some tape and some um, little tidbits that I'm going to do to dress this thing up, uh, I, I think this is already worth it and I haven't even gotten it in the air yet. What I can tell you though is that I got a couple bags of parts, control horns and things like that, and that's really cool for me as a modeler, as an RC modeler. Why? If you remember... If any of you were in the hobby, so I'm in my mid-40s, if any of you were involved in this hobby many years ago, I started with RC trucks, things like that, you used to get the stuff in a kit. It was a box full of a thousand pieces and you put everything together and that's how you build a model. Um, a lot of times anymore, we get our EDFs or our planes, which is cool too, to each their own, but you can literally have the plane out of the box put together and in the air in 15 minutes. And, and that's cool, but sometimes... I like building stuff. I like putting things together. I like spending a couple hours a little bit at a time. Um, I think the recommended assembly time on this is less than an hour, which is pretty neat. Um, it gives me some time to build a model, but it's not overly lengthy. So let's get into this build video. I'm already excited about what I got. Again, you can pick up your Dynam PT-17 at BitGo Hobby if you're interested. Already a great price. Can't wait to get to the build. Let's go.